Hi there! The script for House of the Dragon's first episode was just publicly released online as part of this from uh, script to screen feature that Deadline was doing. And one thing I wanted to split off to give it more focus first before going through the whole thing in a longer video is it contains pages giving all of the dialogue of this big scene that we know they filmed. We already saw photos of this. This big scene in the throne room where Viserys and Daemon discuss old Valyria and prophecies. Now, I've been talking about this since season one leaks before the premiere. I made a series of videos back last summer when I was saying they're actually going to start in injecting more magic into this show. That Whereas Game of Thrones is trying to cut out magic, they're trying to put magic back in. But subtly in the form of prophecy, that if you're throwing fireballs around, people would record that, or, you know, freezing spells, people would record that. Versus, oh, I had this really prophetic dream, but I didn't write it down in the history, so, you know, private conversation people wouldn't remember. So there are a couple of prophetic things that they put in. To do that, I made a checklist. I said that Viserys has a prophetic dream about his son uh, wearing a crown, and then he dies, so he goes, well... What's going on here is Rainier the Air, uh, tied to that white stag that appears. That's a trope they used. And that Aegon the Conqueror had a prophetic dream about the coming of the White Walkers again. But the third thing on the checklist was that they were also going to prominently mention, I said like a year ago at this point, there's going to be this really prominent scene that was described in leaks where Viserys and Daemon discuss Old Valyria. And that was later valid. We found out that they described this. The actors described it. We have a photo or two of it. We know this scene existed. And in the shooting script, it's four full pages, which is a pretty sizable scene. And it happens right after Otto sends Allison to comfort Viserys, and he says, wear one of your mother's dresses. It's after we see Otto sending her away, but before she arrives. And... According to this script, the next scene would then, after it ends, it would cut to Daemon in the brothel. So I don't know if this is canon or what, but it's, it's an interesting scene. It doesn't introduce new names or concepts we didn't already know. But I think they cut this purely for time. And, you know, there's clips going around of George R. R. Martin at the, like, the For Your Consideration event going... Aren't they going to have, like, a Blu-ray or something to release the deleted scenes? This was, that like this, there was the one where Bela says she has a dragon, she wants to ride Moondancer. That's the one they screened last winter. But there, there's a couple of deleted scenes. We have a growing list of these things. So, with that set up, I'm just going to read off the thing. just going to post it and read it off here. King Viserys stands in an empty throne room. His only company, the four giant statues representing the former Targaryen kings, the first four kings before him. Viserys toys absently with the Valyrian steel dagger he wears on his belt. The hilt is made of dragon bone. Footfalls click-clack on the stone, echoing through the cavernous room. Viserys is so lost in contemplation that he doesn't seem to hear their approach. Daemon. Brother. Prince Daemon's arrival finally pulls the king's attention. Daemon throws his arms around his brother. This is Emma has just died. The men hold the embrace for a long beat. There is real love there. But Viserys winces, his hidden wound hurting him. The king quickly withdraws from his brother, who notes this. And Daemon asks, How are you? You, you seem hurt. Viserys looks a hundred years old. All the life and passion that Viserys once had now seems to have been taken from him, along with Emma and Balon. He does not answer Daemon directly. Viserys then says, Do you believe the gods have a design? Daemon says, No. Beat. I don't think they give a wet shit about us. It's either, if either they're not real or they don't care. He seems to be falling more on the, they don't give a shit about us. Then Viserys. As Targaryens were thought to be closer to gods than to men, that we were preserved from the doom for some higher purpose. And Daemon searches Viserys, frustrated by his indirectness. He's just, what are you getting at? And Daemon says, We got lucky. There's no shame in that. Viserys, it wasn't luck. It was a girl's dreams. 
Danis saw what was to come and saved us from it. Daemon, that made for a good story, but Danis' dreams didn't make us kings. Aegon's dragons did, on the field of fire. Viserys, there were a thousand dragons in Old Valyria. So what put House Targaryen on the Iron Throne? Dragons or dreams? Daemon, Aegon was no dreamer. He was a conqueror, with a great sword of Valyrian steel and the most fearsome dragon that ever lived. Viserys, Aegon wrote his own history. The truth was something else. But he's trying to introduce him to the... I'm toying with maybe I should name Daemon heir now. Is he ready for it? Daemon just bursts out laughing when he starts saying, have you considered that the truth was something else? He just laughs. Daemon laughs, chiding at the portentousness of the claim. And it takes him a while to recover. He has to recover from laughing and says, and what was that? Viserys takes a long pause. He looks at Daemon, considering whether to tell him some secret truth. But he says nothing in the end. Daemon. The Targaryen history is written in fire and blood, Viserys. Though some of us might wish to forget that, we cannot deny our nature. Viserys sighs, let down by where this is going. He looks up at the statue of King Jaehaerys where it looms over them. King Jaehaerys moved us beyond that, with five decades of peace and progress, and then the vote at the Great Council. And then he says this in a lamenting voice, and now I am meant, somehow, to do even better. Daemon, better? I have nothing but respect for Grandsire and all he accomplished, but Harrenhal was a farce. I think that's interesting. That's the only time they really mention that they're related to Jaehaerys. I mean, once or twice, Viserys will mention, oh, it was when he was drunk at the hunt, he went, ugh, who had to put up with this? And then Lionel Strong points out, you know, Jaehaerys was driven at near madness by his children that Daemon is also the grandson of Jaehaerys, and you know, he gave Daemon Dark Sister personally. That he got it from Xenia, he held on to it for years. Jaehaer I wish we get a flashback scene of Jaehaer in season two of Jaehaerys giving Daemon Dark Sister that he knew him too. And that Daemon was willing to raise a mercenary army who was going to fight Corlys if there wasn't a great council. But that's me reading context in this, but... I have nothing but respect for Grandsire and all he accomplished, but Harrenhal was a farce. Daemon indicates the Iron Throne, where it is slashed in both light and shadow from, from the windows. And Daemon continues, Councils don't make kings. Kings make kings. Viserys, The Great Council worked out well for you, my prince. Daemon, Not as well as it did for you, your grace. Viserys laughs, shows a flash of his old self. I sometimes find myself wishing I could go back to that day and pass it all to Rhaenys, to be just another Targaryen prince. Daemon twists at the insult. Just another prince? Like me? He thinks, he doesn't say that. And Viserys continues. Just another prince, to be able to hunt and read and enjoy life's simpler pleasures. Daemon, give it up then. We're both in our best years, but they are being wasted at court. Viserys, you think I should abdicate the throne? Daemon, leave those burdens to your council. You were the last Targaryen to ride the Black Dread. Claim Vagar. We could fly to conquest together. Viserys, and who would we conquer? Daemon, anyone we wish. We can do as Aegon did. Write our own history. In fire and blood. And it's underlined in the script, in fire and blood. I'm surprised they don't mention Dorne here. They're like, well, who would we conquer? Dorne, I guess. I don't know. But when Viserys looks into his brother's soul, he sees unbridled ambition. The king sighs, his voice softening. He glances up at the statue of Jaehaerys, his great predecessor. The dragons are gods made flesh. If we treat them as tools for our own gain, they will deliver our end. Daemon. You are wrong, brother. It's said that Valyrians created the dragons. If dragons are gods, what does that make you and I? Viserys stares at Daemon with a sense of looming dread. And that's the whole scene, and it probably was filmed like this. We know they filmed it. 
It's a pretty long scene between these two major actors in this. If they ever release any deleted scenes, this is like in the top five things I want to actually see. I, I think they cut it purely for pacing reasons, but it's setting up more of a, the exposition of the Targaryen origin story, that Valyria was destroyed in this volcanic cataclysm, but uh, the daughter of, of Lord Targaryen, Daenys the Dreamer, had a prophetic dream. They fled to Westeros. They're the only dragon lords who survived. And Aegon, and we will later find out, had a prophetic dream. And Viserys believes in it because he had what he feels is a prophetic dream about his son. They'll think, you know, I know what a dream feels like. This felt real. And he believes in it because Aegon the Conqueror's prophecy was real. This is a world where prophecy exists, that Daenys the Dreamer, and that they're having this debate and Daemon's going, or Daenys just got really lucky? How do we know the gods gave her a prophecy? That there's always doomsday preppers who are wrong. But that they have this great philosophical debate about this, and it's really Viserys sizing up Daemon to see if he's ready to accept this. And that it parallels that when he starts talking to Rhaenyra about it, that they say we're closer to gods than men, and she says, I think that's just, the people just say that because we have the dragons. Without that power, we're as fallible as anyone else, is what makes him think she's ready to hear this. That, whereas Daemon, when they're talking about this, <laughs> let's use the dragons to conquer people, just, it doesn't even matter who we conquer. It's not even... Let's conquer Dorne to unite Westeros to finally bring it peace, which I think is, you know, a goal. It's let's conquer for the sake of conquering. It doesn't even matter who. It is such a bad answer to him that he realizes I can't trust Daemon with this. And this reverberates, of course, through the whole story and eventually that the finale when Daemon finds out that Rainier, with Rainier that he never told you. He never thought you were a worthy heir. And it, and it really upsets him. So it's we've known this existed for a while. I'm so happy to have it in print now. I wondered if they were going to have a little more dialogue setting up that they want to do a Doom of Valyria prequel. And it isn't just about the Doom. They, it, the plan was it's a five to seven season show of the century leading up to the Doom, the political factions, that it culminates in the final season with the Doom it is the plan for that. But... They sort of are leading, laying the groundwork for such things, that what are the prequels that they want to do other than Dunkin' Egg, which is after this, that the pilot episode for this has a lengthy discussion about Nymeria and the Roinar, because they want to make a Nymeria and the Roinar spinoff, that there was a bit of a longer discussion about Valyria. Now, I think they're still setting up a Valyria prequel in the sense of just prominently mentioning Valyria, in the sense that we have Viserys building his model city. That's in the script, too. And that on its own is enough to just get people realizing what was Valyria like. Well, it was 10 to 20 times the size of Dragonstone. It was 14 volcanoes. It was huge. They had a thousand dragons at their height. Um, then it all came crashing down. I, I think they, they've set it up enough, but I wonder, would a casual audience know who Daenys and Aenar are, even though they mention them in dialogue by name once or twice? So this would have been great for book fans. I understand. Pacing is a thing. This sounds like it would be brilliant acting. This is great material for these two wonderful actors to work off of in a one-on-one in -on -one scene and touching on things that are like, there's themes in this. Themes or eighth rate book reports. There's themes in this and f philosophical discussion and agency. And I agree, this was a long scene that ate up a lot of time. I just wish we could have gotten a deleted scene of it. Uh, the upcoming Blu ray, if we ever get one, or through Max or something, I don't know. But wow, it, it, this was really great. I, I sympathize, pacing is an issue. I have been looking forward to this thing for months, and we finally got it. So stick with me on the channel. This is part of a series of videos where I'm going to go through the rest of the script for the first episode on the 22 dozen or so differences between this and the finished version we got. Now, they're not giant differences, but they're low to mid-level tiny differences do we explain who boros baratheon is yet no uh reordering scenes around to give them a little different impact 
they, it's a different view of the characters, and it's still pretty close to what we saw, but it's, it's the little details that are interesting of how they refined it differently.